Television, where we're continuing our discussion of what's going on in Inslee. You may have heard some things about Inslee, but I don't think you heard the good things that are going on there, and that's what we're here to do at Birmingham View. So we have another group of merchants who have already been pioneers in the area of Inslee, who are making some fantastic and wonderful changes in that community. And so we have in the studio with us today Mr. Antonio Sperling and his lovely wife, Marquita Sperling. Good to have you on the show. Thank, Thank you, so, you much. so much. I really appreciate you guys being here. We appreciate your So, I mean, I, I know we use these terms, urban pioneers, and it sounds a little bit condescending, but in a lot of ways you guys are because uh, you didn't really start, you're, you're from Inslee, I know, but you chose on purpose to locate your business in Inslee some years ago. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, in 2006, we started to acquire some real estate in that area, uh, particularly along the 19th Street corridor on Avenue E. And so we saw that as a great opportunity to not only create long-term investment growth, but also as a good launching pad to build a base for revitalization. Mm, uh, but, well, but why did you choose it? Because, I mean, I think you had, you had a place on the south side, right? Yes, uh, well, primarily because that's home for me. Mm -hmm. uh, Angela is home for a lot of people. I think uh, apart from experiencing and traveling, going around the world as we all desire to do from time to time, there's still a natural inclination for mankind to do good at home. Go home, go to, you right. get that home and thing. So yeah, uh -huh. Inslee's home to me, Inslee's home to my wife. Uh, we both graduated from Inslee High School, so it's more or less a project. It's one for the home team. Mm -hmm. And so even for those that have migrated through Inslee, such as the Italian community, Jewish yes. community, mm -hmm. the Caucasian community, it's still home to a lot of people in this great city of Birmingham. And I think that it was just a great investment. I still continue to believe that to this day. Uh -huh. And of course, being your the supportive wife, did you say uh uh, <laughs> or did you say you really got to go do this? Well, I didn't because I still have family that's in mm -hmm. so um, I don't think no was an option for me. So. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and how long ago you said this was? Why are you laughing? Why are you laughing when you say that? <laughs> that's just an interesting coming from her. Uh, <laughs> it, it's been a sacrifice for both she and I. But yeah. It's been a, a very good sacrifice mm -hmm. to the good. Uh, not only to the betterment of our family and our marriage, but to the betterment of the community. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if I had to write the last letter in my book that I, I do desire to write a book, I'm working towards at some point I want to start reducing and writing. Uh, I bought with a price. Mm -hmm. In the last chapter, the last sentence, I would like there to be a statement that says he gave his all for everything he knew, which was where he was from. Uh -huh. And uh, I just believe that that's going to be, you know, the, the catalyst that really pulls inner cities back up. Mm -hmm above the uh, the flood line, and yeah. I think that's what's going to ultimately be the catalyst to pull this economy back into yeah. its place of stability, where just, you know, good, hard-earned, hard-working uh, individuals who desire to see community mm -hmm. be rekindled, uh, you know, with urban development or suburban development. It has gravitated so many people's attention, time, money, effort, and skills to move out of uh, areas where they once grew up or knew as home. Uh -huh. And consequently, you just continue to strip the resources of, of uh, humanity in those areas, and then you, exactly. strip, you strip the quality of uh, leadership yeah. in those areas, and consequently, you leave people unto themselves. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, unfortunately, uh, but fortunately, rather, I grew up in an area where <coughs> uh, merchants stayed in the community. Yeah, you have cottons yeah, and, uh, yeah, and you know, Gilmore's they, drugs. They've been there for years, and they're never right, really gone. Right. You mm -hmm. know, they they committed mm -hmm. themselves to uh, you know the vision of what the community stands for, and and quite naturally, the inheritance of their foreparents who started those businesses. Yeah. And I think that's a much needed uh, venture for uh, this society by which we live, and particularly uh, African Americans. Yeah. Know, because we have just uh, not done well with regards to generational wealth succession and yeah. transference, mm -hmm. and so. We saw that as an opportunity to just kind of build that on various foundational bases. And so, um, with that, so you, you're you're building primarily businesses, and that's that's because you're buying primarily on, in the the uh, commercial area. You still do you live in in, in Inslee, or do you not at present? Uh -huh. uh, we don't live per se in Inslee. Actually, we live in an area just outside of Inslee. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have plans of taking some buildings and making some residential. Uh, accommodations uh, mm -hmm. just for us just in, and then for other people obviously too as time goes on mm -hmm. but uh, in my office there's space for me to have a little flat or law flat if yeah. we just wanted to spend a day or two or a night over. Tell me what is your vision for Inslee? You, you, you come in there like I said as a pioneer on the ground inheriting the, actually the mantle from other people who've come in before you right. but what's your vision for Inslee? What do you see happening there 10-20 years from now? Well you know I think that just at the inception of 
what was started and ends. Uh, I give total credit to Reverend Norred, who's mm -hmm. a minister there. Uh, the Henry did a, did a, a fabulous job with B, the B with the B E A stands for yeah, Bethel Inslee Action Task Force. And they started uh, 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 housing mm -hmm. um, developments there at a time when nobody was really looking at that area. That's at right. All. Yeah, right. they started in an area. I think it was called Sandy Bottom. Sandy Bottom. Sandy Bottom. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so Sandy Bottom uh, was an area that Reverend Norred had an awesome vision to start with. Uh, housing and then expanded to the commercial district of Inslee and unfortunately he died an untimely death yeah, right. and uh, in 2005 uh, I, you know just kind of looking at that and seeing some of the necessities and some of the needs in that area I just thought that would be a great opportunity to kind of pick back up more or less and I wandered into it actually to be honest with you. So how did you wander into it then? Uh, without being spiritual but just praying mm -hmm. uh, just trying to see what would you know what would be the purpose by which I've been given breath and my wife and I while we're married mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's a mutual concern for us both that uh, we give ourselves holistically to this community mm -hmm. as an assignment that's given us and so I just don't want to forfeit uh, my participation to make that area better mm -hmm. if there's anything I can add to it so I encourage people mm -hmm. other people that have a kindredness to that area to, to strongly consider investing in that area yeah and like we said we just <coughs> had um, David Bowers who talked about his uh, choosing to invest in that area and uh, people were just shocked and like you know why in the world are you moving in this did you get a lot of that you know Marquita when y'all when y'all talked about moving over there we did, mm -hmm. and um, and it's ironic because we're from Inslee, mm -hmm. so we had the same people who were from Inslee <laughs> saying, uh, why do you choose to go to Inslee? But um, like I said, it's home, mm -hmm. so it was never a fear on my behalf to come to Inslee, but uh, that's where we were led, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that's where we end up in. And when you said led, I mean, do you feel like, uh, like I said, this is your, your divine purpose, I guess, in a certain sense of, of mm -hmm. being here. What do you think that you two can do? Uh, I mean, I'm not saying that you're in it alone, but just you're just two young couple you know what what do you think you can do in this place like this well actually what we're doing is kind of rebuilding and i think that when people see a start mm -hmm. like they can see that it can happen then it gives them hope that okay this might can actually be something mm -hmm. and as it continues you know people are saying okay it's actually working mm -hmm. and then they you know a couple of years later they say okay well maybe i can have a part in that and so and i think that's what it took for someone to actually just start mm -hmm. we had the staples there as far as cottons and gilmers and those people have been in that community for a long time but actually seeing yourself mm -hmm. right. in that community and seeing that it's a doable thing then it's just kind of catching on with people saying. Do you think that, um, you know, uh, 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 Tribeca Clothing Store would be there had you not gone there first and had your own uh, consignment shop there? Do you, do you think that that, that kind of helped spur his decision to move into the area? Right, because it's actually a market. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, no, we say a market, you said a market of people who want to buy clothes, so that, you know. Right, uh -huh. and you know, you got to look at, you know, where does his market come from, mm -hmm. you know, and so... It, I'm thinking that, you know, he kind of keyed into that there is a market there. You know, some people are going there to yeah. do something. Yeah, I mean, yeah they so. got to buy clothes somewhere. You may as well buy it in, right in your own hometown, because, I mean, um, your backyard. Where he was, it was kind of, I want to say seclusion, but people had to come from somewhere to get to where he was. So, so, so the most those people same people come mm -hmm. to Inslee to get what they want. So they still come to Inslee. So exactly. he hadn't lost, he hadn't lost anything. Has, has he gained any new customers? I forgot to ask him that. I'm sure he does. Um, I'm thinking he has. I mean, I know, for instance, my mother, she had never been in Tribeca, mm -hmm. but now she started shopping at Tribeca, so, you know, he's gaining, you know, some people who didn't actually come on the south side, mm -hmm. who just stayed in the area, because I think that's how Insta survived, that the people just stayed in the area and they didn't venture out. Mm -hmm. That's how Cotton stayed there so long, okay. and Gilmore's has been there for so long. So, and the first, and the first thing you did, you, pour, you, you of course, you brought your law office because you are an attorney. Right. So that's what you did there. And talk about some of the other uh, uh, venues that you also have um, in that area. Well, um, Inslee Live Entertainment Loft is a building that we rent out. It's 5,000 square feet for weddings, receptions, banquets, and uh, various other types of events. And then we have uh, Play Over Games and Movies, which is a business that we have where we sell, buy, sell, trade games, and we also repair Xboxes, Wii's, and, mm -hmm. and systems. Yeah, and I think I walked by the, the, uh, the other day, and you said that students come in uh, right. after. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we have a... Um, a uh, actual uh, plan where students can come and uh, participate and actually uh, buy time on the system. It's 99 cents for an hour as a promotional that we're running out. And it's good uh -huh. for kids because the average kid has a dollar or two in their pocket. Yeah, yeah. And so the thing now that I found through studying that market plan and uh, looking into that is that games are becoming so expensive. Oh, really? You know, these games are $60, $70 a piece. Mm -hmm. 
And any time you can give a, a young adult or a student an opportunity to play a game for a dollar for an hour <laughs> Yay, versus that's spending $70. Uh -huh. uh, I grew up in the day of arcades. And oh, so yeah. I think I had, I had the, the, the uh, Pac-Man. Yeah, the <laughs> yeah. big Pac-Man. You mm -hmm. walk in and go to the grocery store mm -hmm. and, you know, somebody's buying grapes behind you, but you stand over in the corner playing a Pac-Man and Gallagher. Mm -hmm. And so uh, <laughs> if you couldn't get across town and go to a larger arcade, mm -hmm. which they've started to they don't they're not as popular as they once were yeah, because of the yeah. cost of the systems and the profit margins mm -hmm. but we're trying to uh, re-engineer that concept mm -hmm. that you can come in and play on a $300 PlayStation 3 and mm -hmm. a $75 game mm -hmm. for one dollar okay and so that just becomes very spendthrift and economical and mm -hmm. it's very uh, uh, affordable